the Challenger too. The British Army's main battle tank advances looking for enemy positions. Leading on the warrior armoured vehicles of 5th Battalion the Rifles, the Queen's Royal Hussars use their tanks to hit heavy armoured targets before the infantry troops dismount to destroy the enemy close up. Battus is the largest place in the world the British Army can practice combined manoeuvres like this. It's been three years since the Queen's Royal Hussars last exercised here in Canada. Whilst they've been off deploying on operations and doing different roles, now it's all about getting back to their core business. And building on from Exercise Bavarian Charger in South Germany, they're once again working as a battle group. Each day is like a building block. A section attacks advanced to platoon and company level, eventually leading to the crescendo of a battle group attack, with Royal Artillery, Infantry, Air Crews and others involved. What we've seen since we've been out on the prairie is adapting to a totally different environment, different terrain. This provides vehicle crews and vehicle commanders with different issues that they need to deal with. Germany, slightly closer terrain here, wider, more obvious, bigger signatures. Um, so yes, there's definitely a learning progression still get ongoing. The QRH are joined in this exercise by units from across 20th Armour Brigade, including two companies of five rifles who are taking advantage of what Canada has to offer. It is a good experience, it's different to anything we've ever done. A lot of the lads have just come out of training so they haven't even touched Warrior. This is the first time they've seen Warriors. It, a lot of lads went to Grafenveer not long ago, so some experience there. But uh, yeah, this year's been a year of Warrior for five rifles, I'd say. One of the key focuses of this exercise is simply getting soldiers used to working and living with their vehicles once again after the recent tempo of operational deployments. So as you can see, we've got the large gun, the 120mm the gun. Uh, that's where most of the firepower comes out of. That's what does most of the work and most of the damage uh, to prep it for the infantry. We've got a various amount of small arms on top. So we've got um, a correct machine gun um, for things like bunkers. Then we've got the machine gun on top. Uh, a lot of sighting systems on the tank. We can see targets up to 10 k's away. Pretty much we can see targets, so it's really good. Gives us a good amount of optics. It means we can see the battle before we actually get into it, which obviously makes it a lot easier for us. Now, you guys are out here for almost like over a month. Tell me a little bit about the conditions you're living in and what you're, how you're sort of eating and sleeping, really. Yeah, ration for 28 days. We sleep in a bivy for 28 days, which is basically just like um, a canvas tent, which the crew sleeps in. Showers when we can. I think we get a main day every week, once a week. So it's prep the wagons for the next week and then try and get a, a solar shower, which is basically water in a bag coming out. So try and get a shower when we can. But yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty harsh conditions, especially with the heat. The first phase of Exercise Prairie Thunder is for live firing. But later on, troops will engage an enemy formed of their fellow soldiers, and they have to outwit them using TES, or Tactical Effects Simulation. TES is basically using blank rounds, but with lasers also. So when you, uh, if you were to get shot uh, on your system, your vehicle would go down with uh, damage to what's actually been hit, or yourself, you can have injuries on yourself as well. For the Queen's Royal Hussars, this training couldn't be any further from what they did in Afghanistan on Op Peric 15. We did light roll and we deployed as a 12 man section um, on the ground. And I was a point man of a section doing all the horn and valon drills. And then I re rolled to come out here as a gunner. So it's been a real good step up and change of pace, really. But the regiment will soon face deployment once again, as 20th Armoured Brigade, who were the last brigade in Iraq, will soon become the last in Afghanistan, deploying on Op Peric 20. The physical pressure, the psychological pressure on people, Battus provides the best training, in my view, that we have uh, for that step into MST, mission specific training for Afghanistan. It puts commanders under great pressure, it puts headquarters at both the battle group level, at my level, and, and, and the subunit commanders, the company and squadron leaders under enormous pressure as well. And that can only help them improve their decision making. And there's no doubt that operating in the real life environment of Afghanistan is all about making decisions under pressure. So Batis is not directly related to what we're doing in Afghanistan in any way, but it absolutely applies to everything we're doing in Afghanistan. As troops look ahead to life under Army 2020 and transferable skills which could be used in any conflict, training like this is ever more important. Ali Gibson, Forces News, Canada.